What's up guys and welcome to the Cinepax YouTube channel. In this video we're going to go over how to use the Cinepax Firefx in Vegas Pro. If you guys head over to Cinepax website you can download a free sample pack of the Firefx and if you guys enjoy that you can download the full version of it which includes 72 different fire assets and I fully recommend getting that. All right, let's get into the tutorial. So in Vegas Pro, I just have these clips arranged and then we're gonna spice it up with some fire embers, some transitions and some burn transitions. So first things first is you're gonna wanna import your Cinepax. So right here where it says the project media panel, go ahead and make sure that's selected. And then up here where it says import media, go ahead and click that. Now you're gonna wanna navigate to wherever your Cinepax fire is or wherever you download your Cinepax fire and extracted it. And with the Cinepax fire effects, you have all these folders that are included we're going to go ahead and import some embers and then we're going to go back we're going to import some transitions and we're going to import some paper burn transitions i really like these a lot make sure when you're importing the paper burn transitions you import let's say you want paper burn number six you go ahead and import number six and you import paper burn at number six track mat. This is very important. Make sure you import both of these. Okay, so now let's take a look at our clips we have. We have four clips back to back with some hard cuts and we're gonna need three different transitions and definitely some embers to give it life. So we're gonna start with the embers. Most of the transitions and embers and effects in the fire effects pack are usually done the same way and this is how you do it. So Go ahead and where you have your timeline right here, choose a spot where your clips aren't, right click it, and go ahead and insert video track. Now you're going to want to grab your effect that you want, so I'm going to use these fire embers for. I'm just going to click and drag, and I'm going to drag them over my footage. So now if you look at it, we'll have a black video with some fire embers, which is what we don't want. So I'm going to actually cut these embers because they're a little too long, and I'm going to actually just cut it by dragging the end of it and then go ahead and move that to the beginning of my clips and then I'm going to go to the end and then press S on my keyboard to split it and I'm going to delete the end part. So now if you look at it we have these fire embers but like I said there's a black background we don't want. That's no problem. All you need to do is go over here to the left and you won't have this button. If you don't have this button go ahead and click these three dots and make sure you click on edit visible button set and make sure compositing mode is checked. Go ahead and click OK. And then once that is checked, you'll have this green little button here. Go ahead and click that. And you're going to want to change this to add. So once you do that, you'll have pretty much your effect already done. Something like that. Okay, now let's add some transitions. So we have a hard cut from right here to here. Now the transitions, it depends on which one you use. We're going to use a regular fire transition first because it's pretty much done the same way. So all you need to do is right click on an empty, empty space of your timeline and insert a new video track. Insert a new video track. And then you're going to, I like to put my cursor in between the clips I'm going to transition. And I'm just going to grab a fire transition and go ahead and drag that over. And I like to put the middle of it pretty much over where my cursor is. So if we go through this fire transition, it kind of does this uh, fire plume. And you're definitely going to want the middle of, of your clips, so pretty much where the transition is, the hard cut, to be encompassed, the, as in like the whole video to be encompassed by fire. It just makes for a better transition. And then now all we need to do is go to the left, click this little button, and go ahead and click add. So now we have a fire transition like this. Now if you don't like the look of the fire, let's say it's too bright like this, you can also change the compositing settings to screen and it gives it more of a fire look like this. I personally like the light in setting because it gives it more of a fire texture, but for some overlays, you're gonna wanna use the either add or screen as well. But for this one, we're gonna use lighten. So now we have this fire transition. Okay, so I added a few more transitions and a few more embers just to spice up my clips. And here we have this, and I added this extra transition and these different embers just to give it more of a just add more to it. But now we need a transition from this clip to this clip. And this is where we're gonna do the paper burn transition. Now here, things are gonna get a little bit complicated, but if you stick with me, we can achieve this effect. So we're gonna wanna scroll down. 
I don't want to change any of the, my previous transitions or embers. I'm going to want to keep them the same. So we're going to want to scroll down till we see our clip timeline. And then we're going to go to the right or left anywhere where there's not a clip. Right click and insert a video track. Now we're going to do this three times. So I'm going to insert a video track and insert a video track. So if we scroll down, all we see is our clip timeline and three empty video tracks. So I'm going to go to the part where I want the transition, which is right here. Now, remember in the beginning where I said import the mats and the paper burn? Well, here's the reason why. So right here where it says paper burn to track mat, I'm going to go ahead and drag that onto above here. I actually have both of them so good. I'm going to drag the paper burn mat onto my clips, on top of my clips. Let me see if that's everything. Yep. So if you look at it, I'm going to want to put it in the middle of my two clips. And right now it's a little long, so I'm going to shorten it. The way I'm going to shorten it is I'm going to hold control. I'm going to put my cursor at the end of the clip and I'm just going to shorten this. So if you look at it, it starts pretty much in the middle of the first clip and then finishes in the middle of the of the second clip, which is kind of what we want. Okay, but you guys, if you haven't noticed yet, um, this transition covers the whole clip with a white burning paper. Well, with this effect, you're going to kind of want a to have the original video files, and here's the reason why. So I'm going to go to the beginning of the transition clip. I'm going to scroll to the bottom to my clip timeline. I'm going to select the first clip you can see right here. I'm going to press S on the keyboard and I'm going to drag the part I cut off, so the part that's covered by the transition, I'm going to drag that on top of my transition. And then now I'm going to elongate this clip, so where I, right here where it says trim event end, I'm just going to click and drag to fill out my transition. So you, you kind of will need the original clips to do this effect because you're going to want you're going to want to be able to extend the clip or even shorten the clip to however you want with the original footage. So if you just have a rendered video with just hard cuts, you pretty much can't achieve this effect and you're going to have to do find some creative ways to either reverse it and add to it. But having the original footage is just way better because it just smooths, it gives you better effect. So now that we're covering it, I'm going to move on to the next step just so we don't forget. Right here, we're going to have this empty space on the clip timeline. Now, the second clip, I'm going to go to the beginning now, and then move my cursor to the end, to where it says trim event start. I'm just going to hold and click, and then drag that to the left. So I pretty much replaced the empty footage that was right here with this clip. And it'll all make sense uh, right now. So now we need to move on to do the effect, actually. So. We pretty much have a sandwich with our track mat, with our first clip, our track mat, and then our second clip. We're gonna highlight our track mat clip, and then we're gonna go over here to the left, and then you might not have this yet, but make sure you click on these three little dots, this more, edit visible button set, make sure make composite parent and make composite child is selected, click okay. And then now these two buttons will pop up. Now we're gonna click this button right here that says make composite child, we're going to do that. Now this pretty much parented this top clip to this paper track mat. But you can see nothing happens. Well now we need to select this top clip, go to the left and where we had our compositing mode selected before. Go ahead and select that. And then go ahead and click multiply mask. So now if we take a look at the transition, I'm going to, here let me highlight this and press shift B so it ran previews so we can see what's actually going on. So if we take a look at it, our clip is burning away with a black background. So you're gonna wanna go to your video effects and then in your search bar, you're gonna wanna search chroma key, chroma keyer, click that. And this default, just go ahead and drag that onto your paper track mat. And then this little window will pop up. Go ahead and click this color blue, click this little eyedropper and go ahead and click the black. So now if we take a look at it, we have our, here let me go frame by frame. We have our first clip burning away as our second clip is revealed. Okay, now we're almost done. We just need to add the fire to finish off this effect. 
So we have one more open layer if we scroll up. So we need to go back to our project media. And then we need to select the paper burn we used. I use this one. And we need to drag it on top of all of our clips. And remember, this is the paper burn without the track map. Now you can see right here, this paper burn has is automatically transparent. It's not going to be like that when you first import it. So when you first import it, it's going to have a black screen. So what you need to do is right click the paper burn, go to properties, go ahead and go over to media. And this will be at none. And so you need to change this, this alpha channel, and I use straight and matted. And doing that will activate the transparent layer. But right now you can see that the paper burn is longer than our transition. So we just need to f speed, um, increase the speed up like we did with the track mat. So hold control, make sure you go to the end. And then to, when it says time stretch, you need to drag and just drag it to the left. Now make sure you put it over our clips, just like this. So now if we look at it and if I ran preview, just like that, we get the most out of our effect. And that's basically it for this tutorial. Here's how everything looks together. That's basically it for this tutorial. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment down below and we'll get to you. Make sure you download the sample pack with the link in the description below. And if you want the regular pack, there you can find it there as well at cinepacks.com. Thanks for watching.